Like a lot of conscious people out there, now I feel super guilty every time I eat a burger. Oh my god, are you like aware of how much energy and water went into making that burger? But with climate deniers like Scott Pruitt running the EPA, the fact that consumption's on the rise, or that if we do nothing about climate change, our grandkids are gonna think about Miami the way we think about Atlantis, this make-believe city underwater that doesn't exist anymore. So here are seven ways to decrease your inevitable impact on climate change. Don't buy a car. By owning and driving a car, you produce seven times the amount of CO2 that someone does who takes transit. In America, studies show that 88% of vehicle emissions come from driving, whereas 1% comes from taking the bus. And if like me, you only walk and bike, that's 0% emissions. Except I guess there is emissions from the food that I need to eat in order to create the energy to push the pedal, so therefore there is emissions from me biking. This one's real easy, and it's to not get rich. The poorest 50% of people on this earth contribute to only 10% of the global emissions. By living in an advanced Western society, you're already deemed rich from a global perspective. But the more wealthy you actually get, the statistically larger your carbon footprint is. With wealth comes mansions that you must heat and air condition. Maybe Jake Paul could make a video about his carbon footprint now that he's bought a giant mansion and we can all learn what happens when dumb people get rich and mess up our environment. Skype, don't fly. You you and I, we're meant to Skype, don't fly. I feel like things get across better when you clap with them. So 11% of vehicle emissions come from air travel. We currently are living in the high tech world where there is Google Hangouts and Skype. So people use them. You don't need to fly across the world to have a meeting with someone. On average, a first class ticket is 2.5 times as detrimental to the environment as a coach ticket. Yes, babe, obviously I can afford a first class ticket, but I'm watching my carbon footprint, so that's why I bought coach. The next one I've started to enact and I thought would be a lot more challenging than it actually is. And it's just to eat less red meat meat and dairy products. So red meat and dairy product consumption does contribute a lot to greenhouse gas emissions. In a comparison, if someone were to say, I actually only eat local, that way it decreases the amount of distance that food needs to travel and therefore decreases the amount of greenhouse gas emissions. And then you say, I decreased my red meat and dairy consumption by 30% and saved more carbon than your whole household did by eating locally for one year. <laughs> Now all you have to do is decrease the amount of red meat and dairy products that you eat. And if you need some inspiration, just watch Okja because now every time I eat something from a pig or a cow, I cry and feel horrible. Don't waste. It's estimated that 40% of what's in your fridge right now will go to waste. Another way of looking at this is that people throw out 1,400 calories per day. This causes us to create much more food than we actually need as people contributing to the emissions that are going out from food production. We are all part of a large algorithm of consumption. So what does work is to decrease your waste. One thing to do is if you see that there's food that's gonna go bad, put it in the freezer, freeze it. And another easy one is to, before you go grocery shopping, make sure you've always had a good meal or a big snack so that when you're there, you're not making any impulsive buys and you're only buying what you need. This is another good one for the millennials, which is to just buy less stuff in general. Getting a new MacBook Pro for Christmas is the equivalent of driving 1,300 miles. So borrow things from friends or shop secondhand. It's like fashion cyclical. All the shit from the 90s that your parents have in their closet is cool now. Go to secondhand store or just go to your parents' closet. Need some other inspiration? Go watch the minimalism documentary on Netflix and then you'll start to get boners for owning less. And now if someone asks, yo, have you snatched the new Yeezys yet? You can say, I actually haven't copped the new Yeezys. I'm watching my carbon footprint, being a hype beast is bad for the environment, bro. And lastly, you need to vote for science. This was one that was messed up in the last American election because Scott Pruitt is the bane of my existence. He is a climate denier. When hurricanes happen, he decides that it's the time to say, if you bring up climate change now, you're being insensitive. They need to not be in office controlling the Environmental Protection Agency. When voting, you need to look at the politicians and where they stand when it comes to climate change. So first of all, it's important if they believe in it. Whoa, didn't think that'd be a hard one, but that's clearly something that we need to be aware of. Once you're aware that they believe in climate change, see what their actions are gonna be and vote with and for science. Because like science, climate change is real. Whether you believe in it or not, it's going to happen. It's gonna happen to your kids and it's gonna happen to your grandkids. And in fact, it's happening to you right now. Hashtag watch the news. Another helpful hint is that usually indigenous activists are working very closely with climate change. We're gonna put a video here where we actually joined the indigenous people of Canada in a protest against the government that was directly related to climate change. So that's a place where you can look if you wanna get involved with the movement. In the meantime, make sure that you're subscribed, watch more videos and put these into action because then you will be helping to decrease your footprint and hopefully allowing your grandkids to have a little bit of a better life.